So now with our engines built, we're going to continue using the similar technique in order to build a new a new end cap on this rocket, as well as some armor plating around the sides, a canopy for a cockpit or or a bridge of the little ship, and also uh, a, a new engine, a little variation on uh, on this engine here on the bottom. So let's start with the with the nose cone here. We'll go back over into polygon mode and we'll move over to our body element. We'll select this ring on top. We'll make sure to get all the polygons out of there. We'll copy those and go in and make a new mesh item, which we will rename details to, and we'll paste that in. Now with that done, what we want to be able to do is pull down some edges on this that are staggered and run in between where the fins are and give us a little bit more um, aerodynamic design here. So let's start by um, going in here and grabbing the, the correct points. So we'll grab this one here, and we'll go around to this one, and finally this one over here. So we've got those three points. And I'm going to unhide the body now so that we can see what's going on as we work on this. We're going to grab and pull these down first of all. About there would be fine. And now we need to scale these out. But if we scale from just the, the action center of, of the points that are selected, since it's a triangular set, it's not going to pull out enough on this one side. So we need to switch over to an origin action center. And it's going to drop it down there to the origin. But if we just grab here and pull, we can get those all out and they will be even. Okay, so now we want to tighten these up and get a little bit more of a oops, a little bit more of a pointed design. So what we'll what we'll do is um, and actually first before we do that, let's let's go ahead and thicken this up as we had done on the other parts um, on some of these other parts down here. So we'll grab this and we'll go to polygon thicken. And we'll pull out, and we're going to go to 50 millimeters. Uh, it'll be a nice height for this. So that done, we'll drop the tool, select a couple here, and do a loop slice. Now I have mine set up to um, symmetry with a count of two, and those set to two, and then the symmetrical will only be at 98%. And that will give a nice uh, sharp edge there at the bottom. So now we'll go in and we'll select. Oops, and we can actually see that we've got a problem here as we've done our thicken. And the problem that we get is that it is not, um, it's not resolving correctly on the top. So we'll have to actually redo our thicken here very quickly. And this is something that happens uh, very often. And the way around this is relatively simple. All we do is take our max smoothing angle, angle and drag it up. Oops. Let's drag this out to 50 again. And again, we'll just look at that nose, that end cap there, and drag this up until it pops. And we're set. So again, we'll drop the tool. We'll go in and we'll, and we'll do our little loop slice there to, to clear those up. So now we'll select the each of these points here. And we'll see that when we select this side, it's going to select the mirrored side. And as we select this one, it's going to select the middle. We want to do both the points and the midsections. So we'll select each corner there. We'll select this uh, middle corner. And that will leave this one open edge. And now we can see it kind of has a basketball design here and that will go across and get everyone. If we don't get entire loops here, this is going to cause some n-gons to appear. It's going to ruin the the, um, the, the four-sided polys that we have the nice flow set up there. So we want to make sure that these go these loop all the way around. Now we'll use the bevel tool to pull out. We want to make sure our round level is set to zero because we don't want any points in the middle. We just want to, to thicken up what is there. And we're going to go to probably about 10 millimeters, so I'm going to numerically type that in, 10 millimeters, and that will sharpen up those edges without making them, you know, overly sharp and, and CG looking. Okay, so with that part done, let's move on, and we will move back to our body, and we're going to select, oops, we're going to select all the polygons down to the base, and then we're going to include the ones that run in between our engines. So we'll take those, copy, and make a new mesh item, which we'll call details three. And we'll paste those in. Now with those in there, we're gonna again go back and hide the body since these are overlapping so much of the polygons that are 
that are in the body. We don't want to, that there to obscure the view that we're that we've got. And I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste a few sections here. That center strip and that little side one, and then I'm going to get this larger chunk here and pull that apart. Okay, with that done now, I'm going to go and select one from each one from each section there and then double click on any one of them and we'll select all of them. And now we're going to again go ahead and thicken this as we did in the other. We should have the same settings already in there so all we have to do is click apply and drop the tool and we're set. But the problem that we're getting here is that these are pulling apart even though the polygons are adjacent. And if we see we unsubdivide it, we'll see that they are directly adjacent. When we go to subdivision surfaces, the tendency is to pull away from the outer edge points because they don't have enough influence by themselves to, um, to keep the, the mesh that far out. So what we need to do, again, is go in and loop slice these as we did on the nose cone, and that will tighten things up, oops, tighten things up and allow us to, to pull these back together. So we can see we're starting to get what we want. However, we need to also go in and loop slice the edges. And the first one here I'm going to do just with the same loop slice since it is um, since it's just a single strip of polygons. But for these ones where we need to loop slice each side, and actually this one will do the same way too since it has that little strip sticking out in the back. Um, we need to do each side. Now on these we only need to do one side of them. We don't need to do both. So we'll go in, we'll activate loop slice, and we'll change our count to one put it to free and we'll pull it up to 98%. Use that same um, 2 and 98% just to be able to keep things uniform here. Oops, going the wrong direction. If uh, you notice that your loop slice goes in the wrong direction, um, just select the polygons in the opposite direction oops, and you'll be able to get the, uh, the flow that you're looking for. And sometimes we'll run into problems with symmetry here. So I'm going to turn symmetry off for a moment. Loop slice this side. Oops. Get back down to 98. And then I will loop slice this side. And things are actually still um, symmetrical here. So I'm going to turn symmetry back on now that that's now that, that operation is complete. And then I'm going to go in and I'm also going to loop slice these edges here to tighten up the top of the ship, okay, where it will go into the nose cone. Now the problem we're seeing obviously is that this is overlapping the nose cone. That's not what we want. We actually want this to go underneath there. So I'm going to switch back over to my quad view and I'm going to get my points here, take them, I'm going to scale them in. I still have my origin accents, action center on, so I'm going to scale those in a little bit and then I'm going to move them up so that they fully go underneath this edge and we don't have any open gaps here since we're actually going to be uh, deleting the underlying uh, body geometry here we want to be able to make sure that, um, that all, of our, all of our areas are covered uh, with some sort of geometry underneath. Okay, And actually when we're down here I'm noticing one other thing and that's that these back ends need to also be tightened up as the front ones. We'll go in and slice those. And I'm going to leave this rounded edge right here just because it gives a little bit of a break up in the design. I think, I think I like that. Again, if I wanted to, I could I could very easily go in here and, and uh, change that up. But like I said, I kind of want to keep that little bit of a rounded design, and that's going to echo what's going to happen up here in the cockpit right now, which we'll do right now. So let's go and grab our edges, and we'll bevel those out. I see 125 millimeters. Don't want it to be too thin. Actually, let's go a little farther even. Up to 175. And then what I'm going to do is change back to automatic action center. I'm going to go over to polygons. I'm just going to grab. I think I'm just going to grab this one front polygon right here, and I'm going to create a little canopy out of this. So I'm going to start by just pulling it up. And initially, it's not going to look right, so we got to do some fine tuning here. We'll go in and we'll add a loop slice, and this one we're going to bring back to below 50%, so around 30%. It's going to be closer to the edge. I'm going to hit the tab key to unsubdivide and see what we're actually looking at here. And we want this to have a rounded shape, so 
we're going to do a rounded shape in a low polygon, we would have a steep angle followed by a, a more shallow angle. So we're going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to turn off my symmetry since we're working in the middle of the object and change my action center to selection. And then that's going to want to line right to the top of this poly that we have here. I'm going to pull this in and I'm going to pull it in a little bit more on the on the width and on the on the length. And now we can see we're getting something more rounded off. Okay, so uh, to to improve that even more, I'm actually going to take this and drag it down just a little bit. See that the initial one that we plotted there was a bit too high. Okay, so that's a nice start. I want to make a little bit of a lip here that would serve as uh, kind of a seal uh, in the in the design. So I'm going to go down and put a loop slice there, another one there. And not only has this given us more of a dome shape here, but it's given this nice thin strip of polys here that we can take and bevel in and then pull back out. And that may be too thin, so let's actually back up here. The nice thing with using the, these kind of quick techniques on modeling, we can very quickly decide if something is not working and it's not a difficult thing to, uh, to go back and adjust it. So I'm actually going to take this top one here, and I'm going to select slide and pull it up a bit. I think that'll do it. And now I'm going to again go in here, bevel these down. Now this is looking much, much more convincing. So I'm going to go in just a little bit, and then I'll pull in even quite a bit more the next time. And I'm not even going to bevel in at all. I'm just going to immediately start beveling back out. And that's going to keep a relatively um, tight uh, seal here. So I'm going to do one last one here and then pull it down in and then shift and up arrow to select those and we'll apply the alternate color, that darker color, um, kind of a rubbery seal there. And then also I'm going to take this top part and apply the canopy which is a, which will be a preset in the scene file if you're following along on the same scene file. And then there you go, you have kind of a little bubble canopy all done and ready to go. So with this part done, we're ready to finally go in and we'll add in some details underneath here, um, some engine piping details, and then we'll also finish off by adding a, a new engine piece down here. So let's pause and we'll come back and we'll finish that up.